Hello! How's it going? I'm 60% kicked, and I'm working on a game! Woo! So this is kind of a development update video. I'm going to try to do these in some sort of interval to help update people if they're curious about it, and to give me kind of a, a, a timeline of how these things are changing and stuff, so... Woo! Sounds fun, right? So, I don't know if you've seen any other videos or anything like that, but I'm working on this game called Observateur, or you can just call it Observateur if you're really Americanized or you don't speak French. I mean, I don't, but whatever. So, this is this is the first scene of the game in a way, and so this is what I have so far. Um, you can zoom out and see the kind of the bigger map. Um, a little bit cut off right there. But um, a lot of this game takes place in this town. It's, it's a port town. It's this little floating little town. And uh, you're this little kind of sprite thing. A spirit, maybe. I don't know exactly. You don't really know either. And you follow around this girl named Lily. She's voiced by a wonderful voice actress named Rest Deer. And uh, I'm looking for more voice actors and stuff. But uh, right now it's just text. And eventually there'll be audio dialogue for each of these little scenes and stuff. It's kind of interesting because instead of like a typical movie or something dramatic you might perceive, which has edits and basically taking you through a story but in different perspectives and different places to for the narrative, instead you're choosing where to go to see what happens. So basically in this town, lots of different things are happening at the same time and it'll be over like an interval of like 20 minutes or something like that and you keep going back and you can explore different parts and you start to unravel what's really going on. Um, so it's kind of a, it's a unique game. I don't think I've ever seen exactly something like it. The closest thing, reminds me a lot of Majora's Mask, and especially the, the part, well, particularly the part of Majora's Mask where you're, um, you're watching people's routines. It goes over three days and people do the same thing over the days and, um, and then you go back in time and you keep reliving these three days. So this kind of has that same essence in it. Um, to be honest, the very original inspiration was actually uh, um, a trope from Grand Theft Auto, which is if you are just walking around, you hear people, random people will talk to each other, and you hear conversations. And I was always like, I love that. Sometimes I would just stand around and just listen to these conversations. But instead of them, these conversations were just supposed to be funny, or they're just, they don't really have any weight within the actual uh, game. So instead, this is actually important what you hear, and you're kind of like this fly on the wall, observing what's going on. Um, <clears throat> we can also gather this kind of energy that people kind of put out. You'll kind of absorb it, and then you can reapply that energy in different places. Um, <clears throat> and that's how you can change what is the outcome of what happens in this first part of the game. So this town section is... <clears throat> basically the main first part of the game <clears throat> and it'll go there's a second phase basically and that is more like a 2d platformer and i have an example of that i just have to think where it is oh wait i can't load it i had to like edit the code well let's see if we can do that so let's go to the code shall we so if i want to have that other it's basically like a whole entire different game in a way because doesn't resemble a lot of the stuff. As far as programming-wise, it's pretty much a whole new section. Um, and it's like a platformer. Man, I wish I had an example of it, but I don't think... I think it's going to be a little bit of pain to get it going. I'll just try real quick. Maybe it's just like one quick function. Because I know it's like... Game... Current game... Let's see. Let's see if this works. That'd be awesome if it did. So, this should load something different now. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> So let's open the developer tool. So this is kind of like how I do development. I just keep going back to this uh, HTML file. Uh, you can run it, and you can s use the console to see invalid left-hand assignment. So that's something... Oh, I killed this. I need this. Please work. That'd be awesome. Oh, it must be somewhere else in the code. Where is it? Oh, my. <laughs> Sam, new character. Oh, plus, there's a plus sign randomly somewhere. So that's a problem. Wait, I must have just added that. Oh, fuck, where is that? Oh, right here. Yay. <laughs> One little plus sign messes everything up, naturally. 
Oh yeah, it's working! Yes! Okay, so... I've gone through a few iterations of this part of the game. Now this is very raw. But what's fun is that this is completely... I usually, I usually use other people's physics engines. I've explored a few. Box 2D is a really good one. Um, it's older. And that's what I had a lot of experience with. I first started iOS development. Did a little bit of Box 2D. It's easy to get your own bodies. And, and it just kind of runs on its own. It lets things move around and stuff. Wow, she just fell randomly. That doesn't seem right. I don't know what happened. Um, but you can write your own physics engine as well. And then the second engine, which is a fucking amazing engine called P2.js. Uh, JS stands for JavaScript. That's what we're programming in. And uh, I'm actually using that physics engine for the town part of the game. Um, it's just a very lean, very super fast physics engine. You can do a lot of stuff with it. I love how all the examples they have are very simple. It's just a very fun way to program. You, when you program, you want things to be simple and efficient instead of complex and convoluted. So PG.js is great for that. But even more simple would be to make your own very simple physics engine, which I've done. A very, very crude form of it. It's not fully done yet. What's amazing is if you're just doing a 2D game, such simple things, the physics logic is very simple. Oh, there you go. That's how you jump. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Whoa. Woo. Anyways, um, <clears throat> for example, basically what you're just doing is you have this object. You have an XY grid, and you have an object that has those properties of an X and a Y, but would be two numbers. One's like 200 or 300. And then you do things, you check every frame, which is usually 60 times a second. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, and it checks things during each of those frames. So it's doing this logic 60 times every second. And basically some of the logic says like, hey, if I'm not, if a platform isn't right under me, then fall. So apply gravity. And it, all that is is just minus y a certain amount. And you can do that with like a velocity, like, add a certain amount of velocity and compare it to your current velocity. Um, and basically I'm just checking, you're just checking collisions by with boxes. You're saying, hey, this box is intersecting this box in this, in this way and do this. And that's all of game, all platform games is really, that's the, kind of the guts of the physics engines. So um, P2.js didn't do certain things that I wanted it to do. Um, and you had to work within the engine to do a lot of stuff. She fall again. What the hell? Um, well, this is just an example. I just wanted to try this um, changing gradient on the on lines. Someone do that with like power lines, like making a. This supposed to be the outline of a ship. So basically, in this part of the game, you're flying in ships, and you're large ships, and you can crack or you can go into other ships, and you kind of like jump on them. And Lily is like magical, and she can use spells. And uh, one big way that the two parts of the games interact is that in the town section of the game, you'll find spells, and you add it to your spell book. And then you can do the spells as, as Lily in the second part of the game. And uh, you need certain spells to unlock certain areas of the game. And the game itself like runs over a short period of time and just repeats, and you have to find different ways to get through stuff. Uh, so this is a more like, action-packed part of the game. Um, but it illustrates a story. Uh, I won't be. I won't be getting, be getting into that right now. Um, now I'm gonna put back my old, the old game, so I can sh show some more stuff about the town. So status. Where I am in this game. I've been having to do a lot of um, just design, and that's been going on for years. This game has a already long life cycle, but it's okay. It's okay. I think it's almost like three years now, maybe two and a half or something. A lot of design so it's changed over a long period of time. And um, I mean, all you can do is just keep refining things, right? But I want to get more production done. Okay, I really want to go back into the other part of the town to show you some stuff. Let's go back to game. Oops. Oops. Uh, where is it? Ah! I just want to... Okay, there's way too many things that say game. Oh, current game. That's usually how... 
how I have to I have to constantly be searching through the code to find the sections where I need to go to. I love that this is so simple. So this is a way that I can actually change a large chunk of the game. I'll probably have to do different stuff like pause screen. Um, you you access these consoles when you're in the 2D part. So it'll switch to like you looking directly at the console of like the ship console. Um, so that'll be another game that I have to put in there. Uh, and this, looking at your spells. Um, so let's bring it back to the game town. So here's Lily. And so you start off, she's asleep. And you're the sprite, and you come into this time, this world. Um, it's like Groundhog Day, where you keep repeating it, but yet you can change things. So you're, you're starting a freighter. Um, See, so yeah, I got a few very minor beats started. Like, I got her moving some places. And uh, I can show you how the kind of... I want to say dramatic things happen in the game, the, the drama beats, how they occur. So I have this whole like system, or I call them beats, and they just basically just makes these things go in a sequence. Um, so for example, we'll just start with one that, that, that happened. So here, here's like the beginning. And basically I just do three parameters in each beat. One is what character. Second is what to do with that, and third is any data you might need with that. So, for example, this first beat you can see, let me zoom in a little bit, is Lily set her mood, so that sets her, her graphic to asleep. Um, and so once that's done, it'll go to the next one, which is just Lily wait and for 1500 milliseconds. So basically, this first thing is like some sort of action, and this and this third part is um. I mean, the second part is an action. Third part is what do you want to, what um, numbers do you need for that action? So like, wait needs a duration. So that's the duration, and it's fun to program that. It's pretty cool. It lets me think, lets me write the story like a story where it's like sequence like oh this person's going here they're waiting so it's more like intuitive in that way instead of each one being really manual and very specific and it's very it's like really anybody could now if they wanted to make those little storyline things happen uh, i want to show the fuck the beat function what the hell there we go so wow you can actually send more oh this is old this is not right so these are like the three things, and this is why I titled them when, when it runs into the function. These are the things that are called character, doing, and data. And then, um, wow, this function is actually really simple. It's more like what the other how the other functions interact with it is more complex. But basically, it'll just see what which is the action manager. You need to title these things. So I had a, a I had to come up with some, how what do you call those things that happen in a sequence? I called them beats. Uh, what do I do to in what what thing manages those beats. I called it an action manager. You have to title them something. I mean, I can call them something that helps me know what it is. <clears throat> so here, here you go. This process. This will, it'll do it every so often. Um, so like, all these if statements. So, if set mood is, um, is what it's doing. Or if it's set body expression, or if it's walking, you automatically set the duration to 100 if it's not already has, or if those those things. Um, if it's wait for arrival, then um, wow, this is a cool function. So wait for arrival, it'll constantly like, loop this until whatever needs to happen happens. Or no, it's it's waiting for them to go somewhere. So wait for arrival is just waiting for them to get there. Maybe I'm getting too deep into it now, but this is a little example of some of the code. So with with that stuff, I can now I can start writing these scenes and kind of what I'm figuring out is exactly what happens in the town and what each action how it changes the timeline. Because basically, you have multiple sort of endings of this town section, and they lead to different um, platforming sections, um, and then those characters are interacting differently with a different timeline. So I have to kind of perceive each outcome 
yeah. Uh, <clears throat> mechanics are unique in this game, and I, it's all very conceptual right now. So I still don't know 100% if it'll really be effective until I get further down, especially with the dialogue. One cool thing I wanted with the dialogue was for you just to be wandering around the town, and then you, you can overhear something, and it's kind of quiet, and as you get closer, you can get closer to the sound and then see what's going on. Oh, this is a this is a little shop. This is a bar. My God, Doris, you would not believe! Oh dear, sweetie, what happened? I woke up with such a headache, and I was having such a nice dream. I just can't cope today, Doris. You know what I need? Uh, I I know exactly what you want, sweetheart. Great, now make it a double. Um, but don't you think? Don't even get started. I'm, at, I'm in control of my life, woman. <laughs> so, basically, some of the themes around the, uh, the town is these kind of, like, I guess working themes. There's a lot of, um, these are kind of like echoes of what I think about society and work and stuff. And all these people are kind of, basically this town is has been conquered by a, a larger entity called the Federation. Um, and they're kind of just suppressed. So you can think like how a government can suppress the economy of a town. And that's kind of what's going on here. <clears throat> and, but there's all these also mechanical things. So they're duress, like she's duress. So she all she can do is drink. And because she's drinking duress, her, she's the manager of the restaurant, which is up here. And so she's just harasses everybody else. So it's kind of like, it shows how mechanically, how systems um, <clears throat> affect social things and society itself. So those are, that's kind of the, my basic idea about it. Lily herself, she's kind of foreign. She's out of this town and she's coming into it. She's kind of observing it. She has a fresh perspective on it because she's not in it. So you kind of hear her and she's kind of very outspoken about things. She'd be like, what the hell's wrong with that? Um, and in one of the endings, she starts like a riot, sort of, but nobody wants to join her. They are almost content with staying there. And whew, I want to tell you more of the story stuff, but I, I don't want to reveal it too soon. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, that's, I think it covers it for now. That's a little synopsis of some of the stuff that's been going on. So I have to write some more dialogue. Um, I have to write some, I want to do the intro, which I want to have zooming in on <clears throat> the, world, the first my logo for 60% cat, having some sort of audio in the background that's kind of ominous, mysterious, but kind of magical, too. And then, uh, and then after that, it goes to the title screen, which is Observator, and then you can select New Game or Continue. And then you hit New Game, then there's the kind of, like, stage selection screens, quote-unquote. Because you can go, um, once you unlock each of the new things, you can go back to it. Um, so there's, like, a total of, like, four different ones and they're they're like encapsulated in these little bubbles so you get you just go into the bubble to choose a stage and then you would go here so that's kind of like some of the stuff i'm gonna be working on next um i'm trying to write the intro song a little bit um i've been drawing more of this stuff when i changed how the town was designed a little bit i had everything kind of going in a diamond shape and i was like this box you see here and for whatever reason, I struggle drawing in that style. I mean, I'm not the greatest artist ever at all. And that's one thing I have to content myself with. I'm always unhappy with like how the drawing ends up, but I have to just kind of deal, um, unless somebody wants to draw for me. And so once I started changing to square um, instead of di diagonal, it was so easy to make this stuff, and I felt more inspired to make the graphic stuff as far as the town. So I made just a few things, like this is a console over there. There's a few boxes. This is inside the freighter ship that you arrive in. This is like a warehouse. There's some boxes there. It's very minimal right now. And it's all relatively minimal. Um, that's kind of part of my design is minimalism. There's the shop, so there'd be some things on the shelves and stuff in here. This is the bar. It's probably one of the most detailed ones. Bar stools. It probably has to be a little bit bigger, I realized. Or I'm still adjusting the, the shapes and stuff. And I, my my tablet, my drawing tablet broke, so I've had to make some of the stuff, all this stuff in just with the with shapes in Illustrator. But I think that's been okay. It's been good. So I can't draw for a while until I buy a new tablet, and I have no idea when that's gonna be. Um, so that kind of delays the drawing aspect, which is okay because I need I got a lot of the stuff I need. Um, 
But yeah, that's that's some of Observer Tool. This is update, maybe I'll call this update number one. Um, let me know if you're ever interested. If you want to you know voice actors, hit, the, hit me up with them. If anybody's interested in art, I'm always willing to work with them. Music. Um, while I can do all this stuff myself, it's more helpful to have help. And, um, and if you're just interested or you like it, that'd be great to hear from you, hear your information. Thanks for listening. Just catch you next time.